scaling a mountain, you're on a very fast pace. You and your friend had decided to go rock climbing since it was one of your New Year's resolutions. All of a sudden, rocks started falling down on you, bouncing and sliding. But nothing happened to you, not even a scratch. The universe is definitely on your side today. When you reached the top, you spotted a green leaf falling from the skies. But wait, it's a $100 bill. You grab it, but it all feels weird. Time to go back down. You want to try your luck more and decide to go down in one jump only. It's safe though, you've got your harness on. One, two, three, a deep breath, and off you go. In less than no time, you've reached the ground. When your friend is back on the ground, you jump in a car and drive back home. The next day, you get up, take a quick shower, brush your teeth, and you're out the door, ready to hit the road. Bzz, bzz, it's your phone. Not a call, though, just an email from your boss. Well, this can't be good. You open the email and see there's great news. You're up for a promotion. All your hard work has paid off, and the boss noticed it. Feeling confident, you decide you're going to ask for not only the promotion, but also the chance to be up for a partner position. You're on the subway, heading to work. You look down, and again, another $100 bill. Wow, these $200 appeared out of nowhere. You're finally at your station. Running out, you're a bit late for work, so you're going at a faster pace than you usually do. Suddenly, you notice an ad with a competition, and the main prize is a car. It's the last day you can participate. Well, you're feeling lucky, and send a message with your name to take part in this competition. You'll know the results in a couple of hours. You're finally at work, and it's time for the meeting with your boss. The boss says, since you've joined the company, we've grown by 4%. You've got more accounts to your name than any other employee. Would you like to become a supervisor? That's not enough, you say. I want to be a partner. The boss is shocked, and he says he needs some time to think about it. At lunchtime, you decide to try out a new place around the corner. As you're waiting at the traffic light, you see a girl with headphones on trying to cross the street at the red line. All of a sudden, you see a car speeding up, but the girl doesn't notice anything. You run up and pull her back to safety as fast as you can. I'm Angela, she says. She's got the most beautiful green eyes you've ever seen, and she invites you to lunch to thank you. You end up in that place you wanted to visit. She recommends you should try the double bacon cheeseburger. Ah, that was the best meal you've had in months. At the end, she hands you her business card. It says she's a dentist. Angela also invites you to have a free professional teeth clean. Sounds great! You set an appointment. Bzz. It's an unknown number calling you out of the blue, but you pick up. It's the competition jury member. Great news! They've chosen you to get that car. Right after you hang up, there's another call. Now it's your boss, and he wants to see you immediately. As you walk in the office, you see all the partners waiting for you. You're ready for the worst, but the boss says, Congratulations! You're now our new partner! We're gonna rebrand your office before long. It's 6 p.m. and it's time to go home. You've had a new car and a new position today, but the best part of it is Angela. Before the day ends, you decide to take a step further. You call her up and ask her out on a date tonight. Two hours later, you're at her doorstep looking dapper. That suit cost exactly $200 you found. Her dress looks stunning, too. She says she wanted to wear it for a special occasion just like this one. It's 11 p.m. You gave Angela a lift home. As soon as you're back home, too, you get a message from your landlord asking you if you want the upstairs apartment as the previous tenants just moved out. The price is $300 less. You reply you accept it, almost falling asleep. It's a new day, and you have to get dressed. In the back of your closet, you find a blue ducky tie your mom gave you when you got your first job. You put it on to match it with your favorite gray suit, and as a lucky charm, of course. At the office, everyone's getting a kick out of your hilarious tie. Great tie choice, says Bill. The receptionist loved it, too. Your boss gives you a tap on the shoulder. You're startled, but as soon as you turn around, he winks at you. Well done, reaching new heights. Here, let me show you your new office. Everything's brand new. 
Oh, there's a little welcome surprise for you in the drawer. Unwrap it. You're nervous, but excited. You gulp before opening it, and there's a letter alongside the gift. You open the box immediately. It's a gold watch, and in the letter, all the partners are welcoming you to the team. The sun sets and the time flew by today. With all these meetings, you didn't even get a chance to look at your phone. There are two messages. Call me, Angela. And before you can blink, you're dialing her number. She'd like to go out for dinner. You're in, so you book a table for tonight. Your haircut's been due for a while, and since you're meeting Angela, it's time to take care of it. At the barber's, you sit in the chair and say, the usual please, a haircut and a little trim on the beard. When the barber finishes, he says, this one's on the house. It's your 30th cut with us. You shake his hand and head to Angela. Walking to the restaurant, you see your friend Mike heading back home. You catch up with him and he tells you he has a 50-inch TV he's trying to get rid of. It's all yours if you want it. Of course! It's just perfect for your new bedroom. You bid him goodbye and start walking at a fast pace to the restaurant. You're eager to meet Angela and your face shows it. There's a broad grin on your face you can't seem to shake off. You're a few blocks away now and there's a store that's in liquidation. Everything's half off. You look at your new watch and it says you've still got about 20 minutes to pop in a store, so you go for it. It's a tech store, and people grab all they can see. Phones, smartwatches, laptops. The place is swarming with customers, and this time you're probably out of luck. The laptop you actually wanted is already out of stock. You head out, but all of a sudden, somebody runs up to you and says, Hey, I saw you looking at the laptop section. Take this laptop if you want. I decided I don't need it. Guess what? It's exactly the one you needed. You thank him and go to checkout. Next, you pop in a flower shop to pick up some green dahlias. They match Angela's eyes. When you finally arrive to the restaurant, you realize you're two minutes late. There she is, Angela, waiting for you at the entrance. Hi, sorry I'm late. I've got you some flowers. They're green, just like your gorgeous eyes. Bold move, but you nailed it. She gives you a kiss on the cheek, and you go inside. The mood's perfect. The lights are low, the ambient music is nice, and the restaurant is not too crowded. So you talk and laugh. Right before you both finish your meals, she says, the food's delicious. How did you find this restaurant? You explained that last weekend you were a bit lazy, sweatpants at home kind of mood. You ordered some Chinese food delivery, and it was so delicious, you thought she might try it too. A fortune cookie came along with your food delivery. It said, next week, your luck's going to change. And so, it did. Let's find out something awesome about poisons. No, this is not another video with the top 10 of the most venomous animals. There will be several of them here, but the point is different. We're going to find out about the nature of these substances, which are dangerous for any living creature. There are two glasses in front of you. The first one is full of sour milk, and the other has the venom of one of the most dangerous snakes in the world, Vipera aspis. What do you think? The liquid from which glass can cause negative consequences for your health. The correct answer is sour milk. It can cause bloating, indigestion, and heartburn. But if you drink the snake's venom, nothing will happen. The fact is that this substance is a particular type of protein, and gastric juice splits this protein like any other food. The toxin contained in the poison is dangerous only in contact with blood. Therefore, if you have a wound in your mouth or stomach, then you'll have problems. But as long as the toxin stays away from the blood circulatory system, you needn't worry. However, it doesn't always work like that. Some animals secrete a poison that penetrates your body at the slightest physical contact. But venomous beasts have to deliver this dangerous substance inside your blood. And by the way, this is the difference between poisonous and venomous. In the first case, these are animals that can poison you passively. For example, if you touch them, they don't make any effort, and the poison is released from their bodies constantly. The poison dart frog just hangs out in the jungles of South America and doesn't attack anyone but everyone is afraid to touch it because its skin secretes one of the most dangerous poisons on Earth. The toxin particles contained in the poison of these animals are so tiny that they easily get through the pores of your skin and cause an intense reaction in your body. But venomous animals have bigger toxin particles that can get inside your body only through injection. Venomous animals bite and sting to deliver the venom to blood. Venomous snakes, wasps, spiders, and other creatures use venom to attack prey. 
Poisonous frogs or fish covered with poisonous skin use toxins to defend themselves. That's the difference. One of the most venomous creatures in the world is the box jellyfish. When it stings, it injects a powerful toxin into its enemy, affecting the nervous system and skin cells. They are dangerous not only for sea creatures, but also for people. The toxin acts quickly and can lead to serious health problems within minutes. One of the most poisonous creatures in the world besides the poison dart frog is the puffer fish. Yeah, that famous Japanese delicacy. Many have probably heard that if the cook prepares this fish incorrectly, it can be poisonous even after heat treatment. This fish's toxin is a thousand times more potent than cyanide. The amount of poison inside one puffer fish contains enough toxin to seriously harm several dozen people. When the fish feels danger, it swallows a lot of air along with water and increases in size. In this state, its needles, which contain the toxin, become even more dangerous. So never touch this fish if you see it in the sea. There's the third type of use of venom. It's called intraspecific competition. You can find it in venomous mammals such as the Australian platypus. There are tiny needles on their palms that secrete toxins. A platypus can paralyze an opponent with a kick. But these animals also use poison during mating competitions. Their bodies enhance the properties of the toxins to defeat competitors during the fight for a female. Two males struggle to weaken each other. The male whose poison is more effective wins the battle. Some animals have to bite and sting to use venom, while others just wait for someone else's touch. But what about this little creature that releases its poison like a dart? Meet the cone snail. It hides inside its home and waits for a little fish to swim closer. Then it releases a toxic harpoon from its proboscis and paralyzes the fish. Then the snail swallows the prey whole, like an anaconda. The venom of this small animal is also dangerous for humans as it causes severe problems with breathing, vision, and other issues. At the same time, the substance contained in the poison of the cone snail is used by doctors to make a powerful analgesic. And this is not the only case when animal venom is used in medicine. A poisonous lizard called the Gila monster releases a neurotoxin produced in the salivary gland during a bite. Because of this venom, the bite of this animal is considered one of the most painful in the world. People who were attacked by the Gila monster said that they had experienced a feeling as if hot lava was flowing through their veins. However, such a terrible poison can be useful for humans. Scientists have discovered a hormone in it that can effectively treat diabetes. Some poisons cause muscle paralysis, others can create breathing problems, and others raise blood pressure. But why are they all different? All these differences depend on the prey that venomous animals hunt. For example, most vipers prey on small mammals with a fast metabolism. Therefore, reptiles have developed venom that disrupts blood clotting, resulting in a fast-running hare quickly losing control of its body. However, for cold-blooded animals, such a stratagem would be less effective. That's why some types of cobras produce neurotoxic venom that can stop the transmission inside the nervous system. Such a substance effectively strikes the organisms of cold-blooded creatures. All this suggests that venomous and poisonous creatures adapt their toxins depending on their habitat. That's why venoms of the same species can differ so much. If a viper bit you in one region of a large country, an antidote from another region might not help you. In places with more complex conditions for survival, snakes can develop more dangerous venom to repel enemy attacks or catch fast prey. But this principle also works the other way around. Put a group of snakes in an environment where they can easily catch food and don't have to defend themselves from other animals. This type of snake may eventually become non-venomous. This is because producing venom is a complicated process that requires a lot of energy and resources from the organism. And if the conditions don't require using this substance, then snakes will stop producing it. This happened with sea snakes. They are some of the most venomous animals on earth that hunt fish at the bottom of the sea. Since their prey was much faster than them, they had to develop a strong venom that would quickly paralyze fish. But one of sea snake species stopped getting food this way. Instead of hunting fish, they began to eat fish eggs. This prey doesn't run away, so snakes don't need venom anymore. Eventually, they stopped producing it. How many animals on the planet do you think are poisonous and venomous? According to scientists' calculations, about 15 to 20 percent. But most likely, this number is much higher because people haven't fully studied all the biodiversity of such creatures. Interestingly, almost every species of animal has a poisonous or venomous kind. Even among mammals, the platypus is not the only venomous creature. The slow loris seems like a cute, harmless animal. Still, this primate from Southeast Asia secretes venom from its teeth during a bite. 
Also, some species of shrews produce venom in the same way to paralyze their prey, and vampire bats are the only poisonous flying mammals in the whole world. Okay, we have a large number of poisonous and venomous animals today, but what about the past? Many scientists believe that millions of years ago, venomous dinosaurs walked the earth. Some studies have confirmed this hypothesis. The venomous glands and tissues of these formidable reptiles haven't survived to our times. But in the teeth of some dinosaurs, scientists found small gaps that modern venomous snakes and lizards have. It's possible that prehistoric monsters also use these holes to secrete venom through them. You're living the dream, vacationing across the Americas. One fine day, you stop by a food vendor and order a delicious empanada. It's so crunchy and yummy, and oh no, what is that? As you can only identify half of a cockroach's body. This means that the other half is now swimming its way down your digestive system. Now what? Does this mean you'll turn into a similar insect-like creature in that famous Kafka book? Nah. Unfortunately, you won't live through any metamorphosis. Let's see what happens to that poor little insect. First of all, if you haven't missed school, you know that digestion starts at the mouth. Saliva contains a lot of special enzymes that help digest the starches in your food. In other words, saliva is acidic and starts to break that roach down. So probably if it was alive, it began to pass away right then and there. This means that by the time it makes it to your stomach, it's most likely gone for good. Contrary to your biggest fear, it will not start walking around in your tummy. You see, your experience with this insect has been terrible so far. You've seen this little dude eating the pages of your favorite books. You've seen it squeeze its way in tiny holes when you tried going after it. And you've seen it coming in and out of sewers like it's their playground. So it's normal for you to think, Oh no, will I get sick? Hopefully not. I like to think that since you swallowed such a small piece of it, your immune system will probably take care of it without any big damage to your body. But there is a chance that you'll get similar symptoms to when you have the flu. Apparently cockroaches contain a specific type of protein in their bodies that can give people allergies. It could affect your respiratory system, so you'd find yourself having stuff like a runny nose, an itchy throat, some random rashes, and so on. Since you're a natural truth seeker, while that cockroach is being digested in your intestines, you decide to become the world's next cockroach expert. Surprisingly, this does take the edge off. Fun fact about roaches, they can hold their breath underwater for up to 30 minutes. This means that if they weren't affected by the acid in your stomach, they could probably survive quite some time in there. That's also how they circle around so comfortably inside sewers. But that's disgusting, so we should change the imagery. Even though they are kind of icky insects. A lot of cultures in the world do eat cockroaches. They are considered highly proteic, like many insects. These roaches that you can find in big food markets weren't taken off the streets though. They were born and raised in cockroach farms. I mean, can you imagine that? They're popular because they're cheap and they can be raised in pretty large quantities at once. On a brighter note, did you know that if you actually did swallow a cockroach, it would be like swallowing a dinosaur? I mean, they're not technically dinosaurs, but roaches were the first and only creatures to be discovered living in caves before the dinosaurs were wiped out some 60 million years ago. So next time someone asks you what your favorite meal is, maybe you can say, that prehistoric empanada I had once when I was traveling the world. After a few hours, you're looking at your experience from a different point of view. Who knew you wouldn't be traumatized by swallowing a live cockroach, but rather, you'd want to get more intimate with them as a species. Walking down the street, you see some roaches circling around and even decide to name them. That one is Angkor, for example. And it's a baby cockroach. You recently discovered that a one-day-old cockroach can already run as fast as its parents. And gasp! But there are over 4,000 different species of cockroaches worldwide. Who would have known? You post all about your emotional journey with roaches on social media, and a lot of people seem to have an opinion on what might happen to you. They were all wrong, though. It's been over eight hours already, and that half of a cockroach you ate has probably already been absorbed by your body. That's when your phone rings, and Peter, a close friend of yours, is panicking on the other end of the line. 
Man, I was taking a nap with my mouth open and I think I just swallowed a whole spider. And no, unfortunately, the outcome of this story is not him becoming the next Spider-Man. You see, there's a popular myth that someone started spreading around many years ago that humans usually swallow up to a pound of spiders while sleeping during one lifetime. But that's not true. It's very difficult for a human to swallow a spider unintentionally. The main reason for this has to do with spiders themselves. Humans are huge creatures, and often spiders will see us as a part of the landscape. Just like a couch, stairs, or a piece of furniture. Secondly, if they did get close enough to us, the bizarre sounds we make while sleeping would scare them away. Our snoring and even our breathing vibrate intensely, and this is enough to keep a spider away from us. Only a small number of spider species actually share the space of our homes with us. Unless you live in Australia, of course. And they usually live in quiet corners, not bothering us humans much. Ah, plus, we hardly ever swallow while we're sleeping. The average human spends a long time of their sleeping period without swallowing. It means that the time gap between one swallow and another, the itsy bitsy spider, would have been far gone from Peter's mouth. I think he just wanted a story as hype as yours to share online. Here's a plot twist though. What if what happened to you were to happen the other way around? I mean, what if you were swallowed by a live cockroach instead? Now I know what you're thinking. This would only be possible in the plot of a Harry Potter or some cheesy sci-fi movie, but bear with me. You find yourself shrinking in size until your field of vision is dominated by this humongous animal. From where you're standing, you can see its furry legs and oh my, those look like some weird replacement for teeth. In its eyes, you're probably just another insect that belongs to its wide range of culinary options. Unfortunately for you, roaches will eat almost anything they come across. It's getting closer and closer. Every time it moves its legs, the floor beneath you trembles. You try to run, but it outruns you, and yikes! You've just got swallowed by this beast. A quick check of your surroundings. It's dark and damp and quite smelly. Over to your right, you have what looks like a piece of fruitcake. To your right, a bygone insect. You start to feel a little out of the fresh air, but manage to get a bit of oxygen when the roach opens its mouth to eat yet another piece of something. Its digestive tract looks pretty big, and by its size, you try to figure out how big your cockroach buddy must be. You know that one of the biggest cockroaches alive measures around six inches. I mean, that's the size of an American $1 bill. It's so big that you could probably build a racetrack and do some exercise while you wait to be digested. What's that waterfall forming on the horizon? Ew, how gross. I think it's the roach's intestinal juice that's about to fall down upon you. In a few minutes, them enzymes will break you down like a five-star meal. A few hours ago, you were living your dream vacation and now, you're on the inside of the very creature you've been trying to avoid your entire life. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.